DW here, bringing you the latest MS news and breakthroughs on the Pulse of Progress. Got a couple stories here for you today. First up, well, not first up. Couple stories is one, a new era in multiple sclerosis management, and then two, is a multiple sclerosis cure coming soon? What? Well, no, maybe. <laughs> first up, though, a new era in multiple sclerosis management. So Neurology Live reports chimeric antigen receptor T-cell therapy, or CAR T-cell therapy, has revolutionized the treatment of some cancers, especially leukemia and some lymphomas. But does it offer a similar, prom a similar promise in multiple sclerosis? Hmm. Thing is, CAR-T is the new kid on the MS treatment block. Yep. And it works by taking some of your T cells and engineering them. They, they gather your T cells and then they engineer them and so that they work differently against specific cellular targets. And then you're, giving a, you're given a less effective round of chemotherapy and it's given right back into your body. Now, this is still in the clinical trial phase, right? So who knows if this method would even make it to market. But uh, the main advantage of this th therapy, um, let's see, says Jeffrey Cohen, MD, the director of the Experimental Therapeutics Program in Cleveland Clinic's Mellon Center for Multiple Sclerosis, is a much deeper B-cell penetration and depletion within the tissues, including the central nervous system. And the hypothesis is that this may better address some of the immuno immunopathology in MS. Thing is, T cell therapies are expensive and it's more risky than B cell therapies. But it's all kind of balanced out against the, the potential for just needing just a single treatment and just not long term. So like, this gets this sort of shine on this channel because the treatments are getting better and better each year. And the, the, the game changing paradigms for dealing with multiple sclerosis and the, the, the management of multiple sclerosis, it's just it's a whole mind blowing thing, which leads us to our next story <laughs> from the University of California, San Francisco. So you see. USCF reports, is there a cure for multiple sclerosis within our lifetimes? Is that what's gonna happen? <laughs> a generation ago, most people with multiple sclerosis could expect to be in walkers or wheelchairs within 15 years of diagnosis. But recently, UC San Francisco has made some discoveries that is making people with MS live longer and healthier lives many of them disability free. So the university is paving a way for this cure in our lifetimes, y'all. Let's see here. Use SCF neurology professor and a friend of the program, Dr. Stephen Hauser. Come on, is this is that where he is? No, he's not even on this screen. Dr. Stephen Hauser was on this screen. <laughs> so Dr. Hauser um, yeah, he's a friend of the program, and he's also a, a U, U, USCF professor of multiple sclerosis that has been on the forefront of this type of research for decades. Now, it was his work that showed that it was the B cells that did the damage, and it led to medications like Rituxan and Ocrevus and Kesempta, and it also led to gains in Alzheimer's and Parkinson's and ALS. And then physician scientist Ari Green, MD, and neuroscientist Jonah Chan, PhD, discovered that the antihistamine clemestine led to myelin repair in laboratory tests. Now, unfortunately, at high doses, that medication just has too many side effects to be used as an MS therapy, but it proves that myelin repair is possible. And that's just kind of setting the, the standard for future research into remyelinating therapies. So a few months after that discovery, UCF 
UCSF neurology professor Sergio Barazzini, PhD, and his team got the, got the world's first clues as to why, 10 years after diagnosis, some MS patients are in wheelchairs and others are running marathons. Like, what is it? Some people get MS and other people and, and are seemingly okay and some people get MS and it's just a wrap. So the doctor and his team were looking into that and it was a study in 2023 and it showed that people who inherited a specific genetic variant from both parents were likely to need a walking aid four years sooner than people without. Like it's just nuts to me that like it's not just one parent that gives it to you but it's another parent, it's both of them give it to you. But them figuring that out means another era in precision treatments for multiple sclerosis. Let's see, can this dude, do I actually have this going? Is this happening? No, not him. Yes, him. Adley Howard, MD, worked in that lab. And he also co-led authored the study and explained that the findings suggest that the resilience and the repair in the nervous system determine the course of MS progression and that we should focus on these parts of human biology for th better therapies. And so there's new treatments on the horizon when doctors are closer than ever to getting, to being able to deal with MS before the symptoms even begin. Oh, I'm trying to jump the slide shark there, child. So <laughs> last year, uh, these guys, UCSF professors Michael Wilson, MD, and Joe Derisi, PhD, um, they're, they're revealing clues as to who will develop MS by comparing hundreds of blood samples from people in the armed forces, right? And some people got MS and some people didn't get MS at all. So USCF researchers are all just like really just legit trying to figure that all out. And they said that it's essentially some patients have markers for MS in the bloodstream years before their, their symptoms appear. And you know, it's still in the early phases and all this other good stuff. But understanding that people have markers for MS years before it begins, like that's gonna pave the way for actual good treatments. Dr. Hauser does finish this whole thing up here. And he says that, I think we can in the next few years completely suppress the disease in most people. If not cure the, if you know, um, not cure it, but essentially figure out the finish line with the whole thing. And that that's, that's basically my whole thing is like, yeah, MS puts the battery in my back to make sure I show up consistently as consistently as I can for y'all um, but all the world's sharpest minds are trying to figure this out and trying to figure this out for you for me for patients back in their in their earlier days and they're like mm, she got MS pretty bad and mm, you were a young vibrant cool person and now you just are kind of in a wheelchair just kind of looking out in the space and like that, that's what happened with Dr. Hauser. Like he had one of those patients back in his day when he was a, a resident trying to figure things out. Um, and he was like, yo, I have to figure out this whole MS thing. And he's been at it, you know, 30 some odd years and he's still out here on the front. And it's, it, it, I'm glad that he was able to be here on this show and I'm, I'm on this channel. And I'm glad that y'all are still here and watching and I'll catch you another time you know I'm keeping my finger on the pulse of progress, baby.